Welcome makers. There's one thing that every fledgling content creator absolutely needs. Huh? It's a subscriber counter. In this first ever episode of Heavy Maker, we're going to build one and you'll see how simple it can be. So stick around. I'm Tall Joe and when it counts, we get heavy. There are a few options when starting a project like this. I could dive into my bins of dev boards and breakout boards and throw something together, kind of like this time and temperature display that you're gonna be seeing a lot more of in a future video. I could break out my 3D printer, design some parts, get a custom circuit board made, and have something really unique. What I've actually decided to do for this project is order a kit off the internet and write custom firmware for this to make it do what I want. The kit that I've chosen here is the Whopper Missile Launch Code Display Kit by The Unexpected Maker. I'm gonna have links to this and everything else below. It's a really cool kit. It's got 12 digit alphanumeric display behind this dark acrylic, some NeoPixels along the top, and it's all powered by an ESP32 based Tiny Pico development board, also by The Unexpected Maker. I'm going to show you how I built this and we'll see it in action. This kit comes nicely packaged. It has a 3D printed case, acrylic front, a custom circuit board, and all the hardware and components necessary to build. I ordered the kit with the Tiny Pico and the audio shield. Started by putting solder paste on all the surface mount pads. Then I placed the surface mount components from smallest to largest. Some of these parts are really tiny and take a steady hand to manipulate. By starting with the smallest parts, I had lots of room to adjust them without the larger parts getting in the way. There's a dot on the microchip and that matches up to a dot on the PCB to tell you which way to orient the chip. Once the parts are in place, I double check the orientation and the values, make sure everything's seated, and then use a hot air iron at 300 Celsius to do the soldering. After I have the surface mount parts in place, I move on to the through hole part. I start with the Hacksaw's header because I can use a breadboard to make sure that's aligned properly. Once the backside is done, I move on to the front. Switches pop easily into the holes and are kind of held in place. You don't need to worry about them falling out. For the displays, these have a dot that matches the dot on the PCB. And then once I have them in place, I put a piece of captan tape over the entire string and then I solder them in place. With the kit complete, I built and uploaded the default Whopper firmware in order to test to make sure this whole thing worked. I cloned the repository from GitHub and opened the sketch in the Arduino IDE, and this is what it looked like when I tested it. Board's working, everything soldered in and tested, so I can finally put it into the case. The case is a pretty simple sandwich of acrylic and plastic and PC board with some extra long screws that act as stabilizing legs. Really cool design. And there it is, the kit is built. So now that we've built the kit, time to get started on the firmware. The goal for this is actually pretty simple. We're going to fetch subscriber stats from YouTube, we're going to print them on the display, hopefully with some sort of flashy animation for visual appeal. Check out the footage of how I built the firmware. I started the project by creating a skeleton app in Platform.io that connects to the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description so you can follow along. I can edit configuration files using the IDE and then upload them directly to the Pico's Flash. I'm also using the onboard APA102.star LED to give simple status information during startup. With the Wi-Fi working, it was time to play with the animation. I had a rough idea of what I was looking for, but it didn't know exactly how to make it happen. So I turned off the Wi-Fi and played around with hard-coded strings to tweak the animation until it was perfect without having to worry about the API and getting other stuff to work. It took me a while to find an animation that I found pleasing, but I'm very happy with the result. I know I want to support using dots in the display. We're displaying things like 1.53 million subscribers. So I used the high bit of the character to indicate whether or not there should be a dot follow. Now that we can talk to the internet and display things, it's time to put them together and make this thing useful. I wrote code to fetch the JSON from the YouTube API and parse out the subscriber data. Then I use that to create a string for the display and pass it into the animation function. And that's all I needed to do. Here's what it looked like when I first tested the firmware. And there we have it, makers. Our subscriber counter is operational. <laughs> Wasn't that hard, was it? If there's anything else you'd like to see, please leave a comment. Also leave a comment if you'd like to see the full build video. On a personal note, please use a thumbs up and thumbs down. Let me know how I'm doing. This is a brand new channel, my first video. Feedback is great. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you thought I could do better. I'm not gonna get mad at you for doing a thumbs down. In the meantime though, make stuff happen and keep it heavy. In the meantime though, keep making stuff and keep it happy. Take nine. This is the take where I don't mess up the name of the show.